The Studio to the Street series is designed to uh, provide information, ideas, and resources to artists. Uh, we we're especially interested in um, uh, artists who are uh, considering entering the public art field and may have some questions or concerns about what that would entail, but also to experience public artists like, uh, like many of you are, and you know, maybe you will learn something from the series and, and also possibly can contribute some of your um, ideas or experiences. Last year, uh, some of you participated in Studio to the Street. We had uh, two two-day workshops, in-person workshops. And this year, of course, we've had to switch to 2020 style, so we're doing it virtually. Uh, we're planning studio visits, like today's visit with uh, Lauren Pierce and Antoine Washington. And we, um, we also have several panel discussions on issues like uh, art as activism, working with a fabricator, things of interest to people in the public art world. Or we'll do some tours of local organizations that provide uh, services, uh, often free, to artists and other makers. And we will have some talks on specific, specific topics of interest to um, uh, public artists on insurance, uh, responding to calls for artists, assembling the, um, the materials that you need to participate in the industry, and uh, things like that. The way it's going to work today is we'll have some, we'll do some brief intros of the artists and, uh, but we'll let them mainly introduce themselves and their work and uh, things like that. And after the presentations, we will, we will have a Q and A period where you can um, participate either by entering a question in the chat box or raising your hand. Um, and during the, during the presentation, we, um, we may, you know, interject a few questions with, to the artists, but we would ask you to, put your questions during the presentations into the chat box and we'll be monitoring that and um, you know, we'll try to make sure that everybody's questions get answered. We do have, um, we're very grateful to Cuyahoga Arts and Culture, which has funded Studio to the Street now in its second year. And last week, if you participated, we had Heather Johnson Bates with us from CAC. She's not able to join us today, so I have a brief statement to read from CAC. Um, CSC says this program, Studio to the Street, is sponsored by the residents of Cuyahoga County through a public grant from Cuyahoga, Cuyahoga Arts and Culture. CSC has invested more than $4 million since 2009 to support hundreds of local artists through its Support for Artists grant programs. In addition to providing funding and support, CSC is supporting Studio to the Street uh, again this year to provide professional development opportunities for the continued growth and success of artists in our community. So thank you again to CAC. Um, we would ask today, it's no pressure if you prefer to um, participate with your camera off, that's great. Uh, but, but especially during the Q&A, we would like you to um, consider having your cameras on so it feels more like we're um, actually in a, in a room with each other. So I'm going to turn it over now then to my, uh, well, first of all, do we have the survey results yet, Megan? So we'll put those up just so you can get a sense of what everybody's thinking. And you can scroll through that. We see a lot of, um, we have artists are our main component of our audience today, followed by curious community members. Um, it seems the thinker is most people's favorite public art piece of the ones we listed today. And the national park is most people's favorite space of the choices we had today. So thank you for that. There also will be an, um, an evaluation for you uh, that you can fill out at the end of the session today or you'll have an opportunity to do that over the next couple of days. So um, with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Aaron Guido. Thanks Vince. Hi everyone, I'm Erin, I'm project manager at Land Studio and um, it's really nice to be able to see some uh, familiar faces and some new faces and also just want to know what we said at the beginning but there's the chat going and if you want to uh, just introduce a few sentences about yourself, I saw um, K Charm Design put his Instagram, we'd love for you guys to share your websites just so that you know we can become more familiar with each other and the other artists in our community even though we can't be there in person and also feel free to add questions in that chat box also when we open up for questions you can continue to add questions in that chat box or you can 
raise your hand either by literally raising your hand or using the, the raise hand feature and we'll try to do a mix of all, all questions like that. Um, but we are super excited to be able to speak with Lauren McKenzie and Antoine Washington, two local artists that are doing projects all over town. Um, lots of public art projects, lots of studio projects, um, participating in shows and in Cleveland and um, doing projects even nationally. I've gotten to know both Lauren and Antoine through projects and out and about in Cleveland and I'm really excited to be here. Um, they're two artists I greatly admire and just super excited to chat with you too. Um, both Aunt Lauren and Antoine Studios are in their homes where they're making it work through the pandemic and through being parents. And Land Studio has worked with both Aunt Lauren and Antoine as public artists. And I think we actually both got to, we got to work on, with Lauren and Antoine on their first outdoor public art project, which was um, for both of them, the, the cafe art wall on Public Square. So that's pretty cool because they've done a million public art projects since then. Um, we, uh, we also commissioned Lauren to paint a mural on the corner of Euclid and 36, one of Midtown's first large scale murals. And she's created murals in the Fairfax Elementary in Cleveland Heights, Tremont Athletic Club and Cleveland Flea Creative Clubhouse. More recently, she has gone national and painted murals on the DLW terminal in Buffalo through the Cobblestone Commons Project and in, a, in the food court of Industry City in Book. Brooklyn, New York. Uh, Lauren also just installed her solo exhibition, When the Color Heals the Rest, at May Halls, which was curated by Antoine Washington. Antoine is not only an artist, but also the co-founder of the Museum of Creative Human Art, a shared artist workspace, which um, the When Color Heal Heals the Rest, the show actually acted as a fundraiser for that project. Antoine recently installed Public Art Downtown as part of the Voices of Clee project, participated in the Black Lives Mural on East 93rd, created the Fight for Racial Equity Mural on the Soho Building on West 25th Street, and also painted a mural at May Halls and a utility box in Midtown. So both of the artists are doing projects all over, and so they can answer questions on how they got started and what their experience has been um, both in the studio and as public artists. Um, they're also both collaborating on a large scale mural in the Midtown uh, for the Midtown International Mural Program coming in uh, 2021. So they're collaborating artists as well. So um, we're really excited to talk to them and I'm going to turn it over to Lauren to talk more about her own work and show you her studio. Uh, a tip if you're not familiar with Zoom is um, in the top right corner you can view either uh, have it view all the participants or just the speaker view for for the segments where the artists are speaking and showing you things in their studio. We recommend speaker view so that you can see a little bit closer. And then when we turn it over to questions, we recommend the view where you can see everyone so you can kind of see who's talking and turn on your camera and we can all participate like that. Um, but now I'm going to turn it over to Lauren. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Erin. Hi, all. I'm Lauren McKenzie and I'm a uh, really started uh, this love for creating in a studio. Um, it has gotten bigger uh, from seven years ago when I started and just started doing mural work. Uh, I'd say the first one with Lan was two years ago, three years ago, somewhere in there. Um, but yeah, there's, there's pros and cons to having a studio at home. Uh, definitely being a single mom, it makes it so much easier for me to accomplish the things that I need to accomplish uh, while also prioritizing my children and making things work. So I'm going to take you in for a tour in this like somewhat clean studio, which I like planned on cleaning it, but I was like, you know what, is we just gonna keep it real today? And yeah, so it's kind of clean, kind of not. Uh, so I wanted to start with a body of work that I did a couple years ago and was my first show uh, in Cleveland and my first solo show. And I did this with my, both my boys. And I think because I'm a single mom and because being a mom is my number one job, I really wanted to include the kids 
um, and the thing that I love doing. And especially uh, for my youngest, Keegan, who is on the autism spectrum and who is nonverbal and who spends hours and hours drawing, I really wanted to do something that bridges all these important parts of my life. So I only have one left. Uh, the, soul sh the show sold out, um, but it's this one here. And this is of uh, the boy's dad, Ryan. Um, but I, I just remember the feeling that I had when we were creating this body of work and feeling, of course, incredibly emotional, uh, but just being able to give Keegan an outlet and be able to use his voice in a way that like he didn't get to before. Um, so we also included Dylan in this body of work as well. I don't know, it's a little, it's a little dark. Um, but of course, Dylan did like the dinosaurs and the Star Wars stuff. And then Keegan, who was obsessed with everything Disney did, this stuff like the Coco and the Disney on here and Olaf and Nemo. And I love that because it is the things that both the boys love, love most, which is, you know, Keegan has his obsession with Disney and Dylan has obsession with like Star Wars and fantasy stuff. Um, but I loved, I loved how that all kind of came together. And then in the show, we did portraits of all the people that meant the most to Keegan and who he had relationships with. So that show is amazing. So then uh, from there, I did a couple group shows um, and a couple public pieces as well. Uh, but I think the show that like still leaves a mark on me in my life um, was a self series show that I did last year. And that show included myself and my two younger sisters who all share um, just a real, we really wanted the show to be about our relationship with our bodies. Uh, we all have a very similar trauma experience when it comes to our bodies that I really, uh, I wanted to share, but in a way that like, it was taking, uh, taking the power back and um, where I was choosing to share parts of myself uh, that it just, it, it felt more powerful to me in healing through the process and painting. Um, but yeah, so this is, some of you have seen this work, some of you have been to the show, but this work to me, uh, just because it is so incredibly personal, uh, it means a lot, a lot, a lot. So there's these ones, uh, there's, i move a little bit slowly, this one as well, and then my personal favorite piece, is this big one right here. Um, I love it. It's vulnerable, which I feel like some of the best work comes from being completely vulnerable and completely honest with yourself and the viewer. Um, I don't know, I think that art is, is uh, a conversation, whether we decide to we really want to have a conversation with the viewer or not, or whether it's just a conversation with ourselves. But I, I truly believe that the best work is when we're being completely honest with ourselves. So that's just a couple pieces. It's not crazy big in here. There's nothing really super exciting. Uh, sketchbooks over there, rolled canvases, more rolled canvases. Another body of work that I really, really love was this charcoal series that I did uh, last year. Um, it was a time where I was trying to figure out, um, uh, left my marriage and had a lot of stuff that I was going through. And I really just wanted to um, unleash a lot of stuff. So with the charcoal series, it's basically just the crumbling of charcoal. And I use the palms of my hands and my fingers to paint this body of work. And that was an incredibly like healing and therapeutic process. So that's that one. And then I just finished these pieces uh, for a client that is going to be wallpaper. And we have a ton of my supplies over here, um, 20 billion little things from Sharon Williams. And this is normally where I do all of my stuff. It's a small little space. I love it. It makes me feel warm and cozy. Um, this is actually work that I am working on right now that I'm going to be dropping this week. Um, but yeah. There's a variety of materials in this space from soft pastels to oil pastels to acrylic to oil paint, which is usually what I use when I'm uh, doing 
uh, when I'm steering away from the mixed media work, oil is just the, the fluidity of it, the process of it, uh, the way it just blends so easily. It's, it's my favorite material to use. So yeah, that's it. Cool. Uh, I wonder, um, Adam, if you could pull up just real quick, some of, um, it's so cool to see, you know, your studio work. I wonder if Adam, you can pull up just oh, yeah, a couple the, examples of the public art. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you wouldn't mind talking just a little bit about, you know, some yeah. of these are finished studio works and then um, the public arts and just maybe a, uh, yeah. how you kind of got, went from that studio and leaped into the public art sphere. Absolutely. So the first picture is a piece I just did of my boyfriend's father, who I love dearly, uh, that was just a part of the last show when the color heals the rest. Um, probably my favorite piece from that show. So there's that one. And then let's go to, then that was actually my first large outdoor mural uh, that uh, Joe contacted me from land. That was incredibly terrifying. I am terrified of heights. Uh, but I remember getting the email and just being like, okay, this is a great first step. And I think that like facing our fears is like something that I want to teach my children. I never want to be held down by my fear. So that one was a huge deal for me, not just by the scale of the mural, but just because it was, and not because I was intimidated about putting my artwork up on this wall, but it really was just like, I got to get up on this lift and I got to control this lift and I got to get it done because there's a deadline. Um, so that, that for me was like, that was a huge box checked for me on my career list. But that was, um, it was intimidating because that was the first outdoor one. And I was thinking, I was like, how am I going to translate this sketch into this big wall? Thankfully, you know, having already relationships kind of with Aaron and just feeling uh, very safe and secure to ask questions and to ask for help if I needed it, which I think it's important to have that in your first big public piece. I think there needs to be a level of like uh, security to be able to ask those questions because if it is your first one, you're going to make mistakes. You just there, you're working with people that know what they're doing. And I think being able to, you know, be humble and being able to approach the people that you're working with to ask the questions that you need to ask. So totally. there's, there's a Lauren, just to, um, before you go to the next, the yeah. Liz Moggins asked, where is this again? It's at 36 and Euclid. Oh, and Euclid. It's and right by, what's that a uh, huge, uh, that's a huge, the hall that's right there. That's on the corner. Yeah. Is that the, is that what it is? Uh, the, um, uh, Masonic. Masonic. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, right across from there. Yeah, and then Lauren asked um, if you use uh, you, you use a cherry picker or a trellis for this piece, and I think it was like a boom lift, like a cherry it lift. It was a boom lift, right? yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. It was fun. It was yeah. fun operating the boom lift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Totally. liked it. <laughs> All right, so this one I just did in Brooklyn in Industry City, and I did my best friend Christy and their partner, Briget, and that was incredibly important to me. Uh, Christy has just been kind of um, a backbone in my life to support. And I really, they had just got engaged. And I really wanted to, um, which I'm doing from now on, if I can, uh, for murals specifically, this body of work, but painting the people in my, that are close to me in my life. Um, just memories or moments, but specifically portraits of those people in my life. I feel like I have, if I have the capability to encourage people with my paintbrush, I want to do that. And for me, that was kind of just like a, a gesture and I love you to them and everything that they embody, which is this beautiful love and uh, the start of a, a new chapter for them. So that was a very exciting piece. And also it was in New York City, which was a dream of mine to do a mural in New York. And I got to check that off my list also. So that was awesome. Cool. Yeah, I think, Lauren, Lauren that you yeah. know, to make a point is that, you know, it's th that artwork in Brooklyn is, even though it's indoors, is is still, uh, we would consider that public art because it's yeah, something I, that people see every day. So, so it's, yeah. it's a little bit different function than, a, you know, an artwork in somebody's, in somebody's yeah. house. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's in a food hall, so so many people get to see it. And I, I do think there's a little difference when you have an outdoor mural and the visibility of it and then indoor mural. But with, with that one in Industry City, I mean, there's so many people that see it. 
and go there that like, yeah, and it, it is, it's a, it's a public piece and it is very different than like having a canvas, you know, from your studio, especially the scale of it as well. Yeah. So uh, this one I just did in Buffalo, uh, my boyfriend Ashanti and I, and that was incredibly exhilarating. I hadn't done an outdoor mural in some time. Uh, and that was through the Albright Knox Museum. Uh, the guys there are incredible. Um, it was, it was exciting uh, being able to put up uh, my love for this person in a very big public way, um, but also the support that we give each other who he also helped me paint this mural, which was like this double wrapped up uh, emotional moment to mm -hmm. share my love with people, especially black love. Um, and to just really capture our joy and um, our support for one another. So that was an exciting piece because it was of the two of us and he was there painting this mural with me and he had never done anything like that before. So it was a trusting, beautiful, uh, exhilarating experience. It's beautiful. It makes my heart warm. <laughs> Thank you. It's my favorite. <laughs> Oh yeah, and then more of the charcoal pieces. That was the first charcoal piece that I did uh, in the charcoal series, which I will never sell. It is hanging downstairs in my house. Mm -hmm. uh, just, I think it's also important that like when you're creating, you keep some stuff for yourself, especially the stuff that like means the most and the things that you're getting through. Um, so yeah, that is my favorite from that series. Well, cool. Thank you so much, Lauren. We'll maybe turn it over to Antoine and then we'll okay. bring it back to both of you again, um, ask more questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Antoine has actually two cameras going, which is kind of cool. So um, you can see him up close, but also see where he is in his dining room studio space. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. How everybody doing? Thank, thank you for everybody for coming out, checking us out. Um, how can I get this started? Okay. My space is probably a little bit smaller than Lauren's space, but I'm going to stand up and I'm going to walk around. But on the camera, you can see where I'm going. So let me uh, flip this real quick. Uh, there we go. All right. Right here is my uh, my palette where I kind of like get all my oil paints, all of that type of stuff ready. So I kind of use like this chair and I kind of like use like this whole like, I'll say like piece of glass that I just found in the garage. And I just put, put my oil paints on there, my brushes, everything is set up right now. They're dipped, uh, ready for me to, uh, pretty much I dip them in oil um, in between sessions so they won't dry out and I won't have to constantly keep cleaning them. So that's a, a, a tip that I learned um, just, just around. So I just keep them dipped in a uh, oil brush, I mean, in a brush oil, and that right there keeps me going, keep, keeps everything going um, as I'm working in between processes because I kind of like, let me, let me turn my camera around so you guys can see me when I'm talking. So I kind of uh, I kind of do this thing where I bounce in between like processes bounce in between different uh, bodies of work. Uh, I kind of start things, don't finish them, then finish them, then start more things, kind of like that. So I kind of like do oil painting. I draw, graphic design, uh, working on printmaking. I'm doing, I'll, I'll try to do a little bit of everything. So you, you'll see a little bit of, of that in my studio. So I'm gonna turn my camera back around. These are some few pieces that I've had in my collection that's near and dear to me. Um, that I have shown on Instagram, but haven't really shown publicly like that. Um, uh, some, some of them publicly, some of them, some of them not. Um, this one here is my first Black Family piece, um, which is a series that I started, um, which, uh, which I kind of uh, started by just doing my research on, uh, on a Harlem Renaissance period and just kind of like putting a... Uh, erasing the narrative about black fathers and how they're not in, the, not in the lives of the black family. So I wanted to put that narrative uh, to rest and say that, hey, we're here, we're fathers. And uh, so in this particular piece, I, I decided to make the father really, really big and him covering the whole family. That's the wife, the daughter, 
daughter and a son. So it's just like my family, pretty much. Me, my wife, my son, and my daughter. Um, so I wanted to uh, want to talk about that. Also, uh, wh which my work kind of stems from is the uh, I kind of uh, I kind of go into like the history of like the uh, the Black American experience. So you will see different stories. I I kind of go from like the good times, the trauma. I kind of go through just a little bit of everything that goes on with black people in America. So my stories kind of like go from thing to thing. Some things you're going to like, some things you're not. Um, so I'll go back. This one was uh, a painting I did of a uh, rapper, Nipsey Hussle, when he got killed. Um, he was re very, very pivotal in his, uh, in his community yeah. because he was a, uh, you know, pretty much a pillar, started a business there, employing people, and someone from his own uh, neighborhood killed him right in front of his business and everything that he built. So that was ironic to me to show how we still practice self-hate within our community. So I wanted to talk about that actual experience and actually immortalize that situation because that, that, that also meant, meant a lot to me because of, of where I come from and, and the neighborhoods that I come from and the people that I'm around. Uh, to, to to talk about that, how when you see me, you should see you. Black love is black love. You shouldn't hate your brother. So that, 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 that whole situation was just heartbreaking, so I want to talk about that. Another one, uh, let me turn around, was about, this one is a, a photo of a, a, a painting that I did that was, uh, I recently just did it where I kind of like, it's like probably like 10 paintings on top of this. <laughs> like I kind of like painted, I kind of like painted something, didn't like it, painted something, didn't like it, and it ended up making this beautiful texture. So I ended up just painting, uh, this isn't me, but it looks like me, but it isn't me. Uh, but I ended up painting this portrait of a guy sitting, sitting in water, and it says this water knows it all, meaning, He's tapping back in with his uh, with his ancestors, with through the transatlantic uh, slave trade, and he's learning and gaining wisdom through the ancestors. So that's why he's like this with over his eye to let you know that he's speaking of his third eye. So it goes into this whole thing, uh, but I'm not gonna get into it. It, it. It's a little deep, but you know that's a little bit about that one. Show you this one. This one is one that I, it, it's a old, it's an old piece, but I never really showed it. Um, this one is was a piece that I was working on in a series that I was working on about uh, uh, sex trafficking, human trafficking, and uh, the abuse of women, that type of thing, sexual abuse. So I was I was I was going to do a, a whole series uh, based on that. Um, so I used I used that, and that piece was called Consent. But uh, it goes into a whole lot of, uh, I'll say, just deeper, deeper, deeper connections and stories and just things that I hear day to day, whether it's the news, whether it's people that I'm talking to. Sorry about dapper in the mood, but that's kind of like how my work is. <laughs> Antoine, where do you get um, your source imagery? Is it, um, you know, from your head? Is it uh, photography? Yep, yep. So... So yeah, so a lot of my a lot of my source imagery, I'll see like uh, I'll take pictures of friends, family. I'll take pictures of uh, I mean just random random people like or I pull like random images off the, off of off, off of online, and then I'll switch them up. Like if they have like a short haircut, then I'll put afro on them. If they have so I'll 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 kind of like make it mine if I even like copy the image from like online. I always find a way to kind of like make it mine. Mm -hmm. So another uh, another one is what you will see around here. Got this piece up here. That's kind of like a uh, uh, painting on wood that I did. It kind of goes into this. Uh, this one is a really interesting story because I went on a ride with a, a photographer just as much as this one. Um, same one. We both these these two th these two. Uh, these two women I met on the same day in Cleveland. Um, 
these women were uh, pretty much living on the, like pretty, I, I would say they were living on the streets. Um, but I wanted to, I, I went on like this assignment with, with a photographer um, and he took me on the assignment with him, showed me his process. And so I learned how to uh, learn how to document. I, I was learning his process of documenting and talking to people and getting comfortable in front of the camera to get people to open up. And then he begins to like photograph, I mean, begins to photograph them. So what I did was when I followed along, I also were talking to him and I photographed them as well. And with both of those pieces, um, I, they, they have phenomenal stories. I'm not going to get into the stories because they're kind of lengthy, but these, these women are pretty much women that we see every day, but we overlook because they're not, we seem to, you know, they're invincible to us. So I wanted to immortalize them and make them human and make them uh, and put them in, in their proper place uh, as queens. So what I did was I took that and I took that picture of her which I think I have around here somewhere, but I do have the picture of the other lady. And I just, just kind of made, made her looking into the mirror of herself and, uh, and, 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 and the stars and the beams represents America. And the flowers is me giving her her roses while she's here. And then this one, the same thing. This woman was down there uh, off of Euclid, same conversation. Actually, I do have her, uh, uh, I do have her photo, which I'm gonna grab real quick. I love that one. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Where is that photo at? I just had it. Oh, here we go. This, this is one of the things that I do with those uh, when I'm when I'm working on my process is I just took that, took this photo, and then I turned it into that. You know. So, and and that was her on down there off of Euclid down in East Cleveland. And I was just, you know, going out, talking to her. And, and, and she really enjoyed taking the picture. You see how she was styling. Let me, let me show you how she was styling real quick. <laughs> Look at her, she was styling. You know? <laughs> but I changed the sweater and I did that because I wanted to make her look beautiful, even though she was beautiful, but I, I just really wanted to put gold on her. But that's why that was my first time actually using gold leaf um, in a piece. So I'll show you. It's gold leafing. It's a uh, oil paint, and I and I and I really I'm really not a painter. I'll say like by my my main practice, I'm really a uh, I really draw. That's really what I really really do. But I told myself and I promised myself, 2020 I'm painting all year. A little bit of drawing, but I'm painting all year. So I so I'm doing that. And uh, but this is one of the drawings that I. I was I was working on. I still haven't finished it yet because I've been having a lot of like outdoor projects that I've been doing. But Antoine, would you mind if we um, looked at some of the public art too? I just want to make sure um, people can kind of see how this work kind of has been brought into your public work, um, and maybe sure. you could talk about like you know how you you know how you pick the, those images that you put um, in the public realm. And then I just want to make sure, you know, after that we get time for any questions too, but feel free in that chat um, to fill in some questions too. But maybe you could talk about the, the public art you've worked on too. Oh, let's do it. So this one in particular was a drawing that I did, which I think, I think Lauren has this piece. So I she do. Has, yeah, Lauren has this original piece. Um, <laughs> that she acquired from me. I appreciate the support. Um, he has this piece. And uh, what I did was I scanned this piece in. And this is down on uh, East 55th. If you guys want to check it out, this piece um, is a public piece where I, I blended that uh, my drawing with my graphic design uh, knowledge. And that's how I make a lot of my public art is blending the two disciplines. Um, this one I thought was very, very powerful. I think it has the Alice Walker quote on here, um, which 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 uh, states I can barely read it because my phone is so far. I mean, so small. But uh, this one this one st stemmed around like hair, um, black women, and how beautiful their hair their hair is, and how beautiful our hair is as black people. But not only that, um, just just showing the strength and the interlocking and the braid, um, showing the strength of community, showing the strength of the black community and how we need to stick together. 
uh, through these hard times, especially during a time where, you know, we're going through uh, protests and police killings and all of these type of things in our community. Um, I felt like that should, that would be a positive, I'll say subtle message and also a metaphor to use to uh, speak towards that. And so like, that's what the reason why I use like Tony uh, Morrison and I use Ruby D to also educate the youth in the community and people in the community to let you guys know here in Cleveland, <clears throat> here in Cleveland, we have, we have so much history and have so many powerful people and so many powerful artists of color. Yeah. Hey, wanted, I wanted, I wanted to shed that love and, and, and educate with that. Uh, with this piece, the same thing. Um, this is a, a, a piece. I don't, I don't, I don't think I have this original piece anymore. Might have it, but that was an original drawing that I drew and then I scanned it in and then I mixed the two the same way that I did with the other one. Um, and this one has the uh, quote by Nikki Giovanni and uh, you should go by. It's, it's on East 55th as well. It, they're literally like, uh, I mean, off of, off of, uh, off of East 55th as well. They're literally like down the street from each other. So, this one also has some Cleveland natives, uh, Langston Hughes and Carl Stokes. So uh, it's, it's me blending the strength of our community with subtle messaging around uh, how, and, and I'm usually using, uh, using uh, stars and stripes. Anytime, even if they're not red, white, and blue, they're always representative of America to break down how America is and how America uh, is uh, a melting pot of culture. Same thing here, Mayhalls. Uh, they wanted to, they, the original idea with this one was to, uh, to, to put, put this young lady here, but then put all of the black rock and roll uh, people who influenced rock and roll leading up to the music now. But due to the budget, we couldn't get to that. <laughs> and time. This was my first time ever uh, drawing on the wall. So that was actually done with uh, graphite and charcoal. This one the same way. Uh, I uh, this one went through a lot of changes, but we got to it. Appreciate you, Aaron, for uh, giving me the opportunity for my first public uh, piece of art, which yeah, is you're not amazing. Man, uh, this one I drew. I drew this in like two days, and I, I was so excited. I drew it in two days, and I, uh, I, man, I just I just just started piecing it together, and, and, and this was my first time actually mixing the two. So this is my first, that was my first time ever like doing graphic design and drawing uh, and mixing the two. So that was my first public art, my first time actually ever doing that practice. And same thing with, the, uh, with this one, the same way, if you notice in the theme in my, all of my public art is stars and stripes. Uh, you'll see the stripes, but this one is more so a, a piece about, uh, 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 two the, the the couple that were killed um, uh, during uh, here in Cleveland. Uh, I get emotional when I get to talking about this stuff, man. But the two couple that were, the, the couple that were killed in Cleveland. Um, you, if you want to know more about the whole story, you can go to my Instagram page. I'm not gonna go into the story, but it's about the. Uh, it, it, it's basically them meeting with God in heaven it's called a meeting with meeting with the son of God. They're in front of a beach. And I wanted to put them in front of a beach because black people hardly ever get vacations and they're on a permanent vacation. But sometimes in America well, for black people, freedom is death. And that, that piece means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. Same thing with uh, stars and stripes again, but I use uh, a middle, uh, 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 the middle piece has a black woman that represents all black women, but but uh, women in general. You have uh, Ida B. Wells and you have Rosa Parks. Those are two sisters who definitely are the epitome of racial equity. They fought for women's rights, black rights. I mean, basic human rights. So those women, I thought, were some of the most powerful women to represent what that word meant. Um, I was asked to do that by Ohio City, and I'm grateful for that. Um, to, to see my sister Ida B. Wells and Rosa Parks on the wall, that makes me proud. It makes them proud. Thank you so much, Antoine and Lauren. I, your work is, um, both of your work is so beautiful. Um, so now we're gonna open up to questions from everyone. If you wanna switch your view to 
from the speaker view to the all view and turn on your camera. That would be awesome. Um, and and maybe I'll um, uh, it, Greg asks, uh, have uh, either of you guys been thinking about experimenting um, in three dimensional work? I know both of you. Um, you know, your public art is both mural based or uh, you know like a vinyl decal. Um, I know Lauren, you've done. I've seen some of your sculpture work oh, yeah. uh, smaller, but just that'd be cool to know if you guys have been thinking about that at all. Uh, I know for me, like with the color of my skin series, a lot, there's uh, which I haven't fired yet, but I did like last year. I've done a couple head busts with that, uh, but I want to incorporate a lot more of my canvas work with the, my sculpture work. So it has been something I've been thinking about. Just haven't had the time to like really, uh, I, I feel like that's a body of work that I really need to give my full attention to and I just haven't been able to because of COVID and you know, now having kids home every single day, there's not a whole lot of time of, to be able to like dive in uh, in a way that I feel like would do it justice. But I have been thinking about it a lot, yeah. What about you, Antoine? Uh. It's a three-dimensional piece. I, I, I want to get back into sculpture. I did a lot of sculpture when I was in college. I actually was pretty good at it, um, but I just haven't had the time to actually do it. I think that's going to be my next thing is to tackle that once I learn this printmaking thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and, and jump into some sculpture work because I got some ideas for that too. But, yeah, I, I, I definitely want to get into that. Do you guys approach um, your studio practice different um, than your public art practice? Or could you describe how you might approach them the same or different um, when you're thinking of the two, something being out in the realm versus something in a studio? Antoine, you want to go first on that one? Um. <laughs> I'll, I'll say, uh, I'll, so, so the question would be, so the question would be, how do I approach it, approach it differently than I approach it in a, uh, in public is that is that you, or maybe you don't maybe you approach them the same way but just gotcha. as an artist going from studio to public do you approach the two you know, I would the responsibility say, is different i would i would say the responsibility is different but i would say like i approach it the same way i do a ton of research i read a lot of books um, i mean i kind of i kind of want to i kind of feel like I'm educating all the time because I want my work to always be some have some form of education. So I would say, yeah, I, I, I kind of approach it the same way. But usually my public art is a little bit more light handed than my studio art. I'll say that. I would say about the same. I think the approach, I mean, it's it's the same, but it's also different. I think it's just because the scale. So you have to think about it in a very different kind of way. Um, but I think for the most part, I like thinking about it in the same way because, and I don't feel like I'm being intimidated by anything. Um, but I do think, I mean, just the practice in general, like you're, you're alone in your studio for the most part. And then when you're doing public art, you're surrounded by people. So I think that is a thing that the approach is different. It's like, I have to think about all the outside factors when I'm doing public art and how that's going to influence the work or as well as the process more so than just the studio artwork. I have more time to think about uh, when I'm in the studio and the, the care is the same, uh, but also different. Um, I do think with public artwork, because more people are going to see it, I feel like there is more of a responsibility to make sure I'm saying the things that I want to say and because I have this opportunity to say it. So I, I, I think it's, the approach is the process feels somewhat similar, uh, but I think the meanings behind it can vary. Not one more important than the other, they just vary. Yeah, yeah, same with me. It's just, it just varies. Um, and, and, and it depends on too what it is I'm being asked to do. A lot of yeah. things I do if I don't feel comfortable doing it or if, if, or if it doesn't fit what, what my art stands for. So I kind of I kind of assess all of that. If I'm able to do have some freedom. I don't want to be speaking someone else's voice. I want to speak my true artistic voice and I want to make sure that I'm coming across authentic and I'm, and I'm true to myself when I'm doing my public art, just the same way as I'm doing my studio art. So yeah, I would say definitely I try to line the two up and as, as much as possible. 
Mm -hmm. I will say, not necessarily to that, but kind of what Antoine's saying is like making sure it speaks to who you are. I think, especially where I'm at as an artist right now, I'm being way more selective about the things that I'm producing and who I'm producing for. I think there, we have a duty as Black artists right now to make sure that like, we're not gatekeepers, we're not selling out the things that we're saying, whether it's covert or overt and the statements that we're making, I do think that we have an obligation to our own but also to the people that like are consuming our work. I think that like, I know for me, I'm really in that place of like, I, I don't know if I mess with everybody and I'm really okay with that. And I used to feel like I couldn't say no. And now I, I, I feel like there have been times lately where I've said no, because it just, their convictions don't align with mine. And like, what good's money if you're kind of selling out on the thing you're trying to do, so. Yeah. Well, this, we, we do have an, another question that came in that um, I think the two of you could respond to, and maybe there's some others in the audience that could also. Uh, Lauren Asbury asks, um, what are some of the professional artist directories that artists are using to get their work noticed by potential clients? And she mentions indie walls and custom made, want to know if there's other directories out there. And you know, maybe this is also a chance to talk a little more generally about how you do get your work out there. How do how do um, public artists um, find work in the public art world? I mean, honestly, mine's been through Instagram. Like a lot of my success came from the visibility from Instagram. And that mostly started when my art page was my personal page. And I just talked about my life in a very vulnerable way with raising my kids, the things that I was going through. I have pulled back from that, I think, a little bit more as the years have gone on, become more private. Uh, but social media has been... Uh, the base of of all of the things that I've had, I think, with public art, I haven't uh, really um, been seeking. There have been some things that I've applied to, but it's been mostly, uh, and I think Antoine's the same way, is like just being completely honest and true to ourselves that like people come, people will find you. And I, and I do think that like working hard and making sure that like you're staying true to yourself and where you're visible. But like, I honestly think, at least for us, like the jobs came, but I also think that just because of what we represent also. Yep. Yep. I, I would say the same thing. I, I, my, mine, mine didn't start all the way on Instagram. Mine, I mean, mine was a little different. Uh, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of got my start with, with, with actually, you know, going to like, a, uh, I mean, I worked at the post office for, the, for, the, for four years before I even stepped in the art arena. So I, I, I was doing art, but I wasn't doing art. So when I, when I actually got my, my, my kind of start here in Cleveland was just uh, going to like informationals and then meeting people. And then I ended up meeting, yeah. led to the next thing and then led to the next thing. Okay. Um, and that and and getting and putting myself out into shows and just taking taking that risk of yeah. paying to submit and seeing if you get in. I mean, jury shows help. I mean, a lot of things help to get your get your work seen. So uh, I don't think it's one way or no no right way to yeah. do it. But use all those channels to get where it is as you're trying to go. Because everybody's artistic goal is differently. Like. Some people want to be rich and famous and make millions of dollars off their work. Some people want to tell stories and they're, they're fine with that. Some people just have different ways of what they want to do with their art. They want to be illustrators. They want to be whatever. Just put yourself around the people and put yourself in position around the people where you're trying to go. I think artists and residency programs too, I think are a huge, a huge thing. And I think yeah. a lot of curators, a lot of galleries look into artists and residency programs. Um, but yeah, I think social networking is also a huge thing. I think a lot of my jobs too came from like word of mouth and like going out and meeting people. And then, you know, cause I think a lot of times people are more so they start off wanting to invest in you as a person. And then it's like your art is just a part of that thing. So like, I think that's why, you know, for Antoine, just remaining who we are and true for ourselves. And I know, Antoine talk a lot, but like the goal is not money. Like we want to support our families, but that's not really the thing. And I think sometimes the drive and the motivation behind it, you have different outcomes. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to, speaking to that, um, 
uh, the artist in residence. Uh, I know, Antoine, you're going to be the artist in residence for Zygote Press. Can you, Liz asks, uh, can you tell what, what kind of printmaking are you thinking of doing? And then she also said, Lauren, you should make some monoprints. I think you would love it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've done printmaking since high school, so I'm a little nervous about that one. <laughs> No, printmaking, I think, uh, is something that I, I really, really love and uh, admire from afar. I mean, one of my favorite artists is Elizabeth Catlett, who does a lot of uh, uh, printmaking uh, work. Um, so I, I study a lot of her work. But, I w but, but my goal is to, with this residency that I have at Zygo, is to take my, uh, my public art pieces and turn them into actual prints because I want people to actually be able to walk around with the art you know, or have a piece of that public art. If it comes down one day, if something happens to it, it continues to live on. So I'm thinking about uh, continuing my public art work and actually printing editions and doing it. So that's why I'm working on the, I, I'm taking a screen printing approach to start with. Then I'm gonna go into some mono print and I'm gonna go into some letter pressing and all of that type of stuff. So I, I'm trying to take advantage of this whole year of printmaking and really, really do something uh, interesting. And one, one of my, and one of my, my, another artist that I'm studying now too is uh, Emery Douglas, who was the uh, the head artist for the Black Panther Party, who did all types of printmaking and and had a whole lot of great prints. So check them out too. Beautiful work. I think we have probably time for one more question. I know there is two in there. Um, the first one is. Uh, so I don't know if it's possible because it might be secret, Lauren, but Lauren, can you tell us more about your wallpaper commission? Is it a private commission or will this be sailed to the public? It um, will not. I also ask about collaboration if you want to touch on that too. Okay, like Antoine and I collaborating? Yeah, so they're two separate questions, but um, the, the, uh, the, what is your main consideration when deciding to do a collaborative work? And then also someone asked about your wallpaper commission and can people in the public buy it? <laughs> Uh, the wallpaper is for a celebrity, and I'm not allowed to name her name, but I'm super excited. Uh, it's gone, all the, the wallpaper is going in her bathroom, so it won't be for the public. It's a private commission, but I'm so excited about it. Um, but as far as collaborations, I mean, Antoine and I kind of just like fell into that because, I mean, we would have been following each other on Instagram, and then he came to my show last year with his wife and um, just kind of hit it off. And then we had just been like back and forth kind of talking. We really don't like each other like at all, but <laughs> we figured our artwork looks really good together. No, I mean, we like both love color, the things that we are uh, sharing about in our own lives. Uh, our convictions are very similar. And um, I don't know, I, I don't think that I could collaborate with everybody. I also think that like, because of our convictions align, the things that we're trying to say, it just made it easier for like to, I mean, the mural that we're doing next year is gonna be incredible. I'm really excited about it. Ruffle some feathers, which we're all about. Also like the depiction of, of the people that we're doing. Um, but I think like having collaborate, collaborating with people that align to the things that you're gonna say makes it so much easier when you're coming to the table, like, well, let's paint this, this, and this. So like. Everything that Antoine and I came up with, it just, it was easy. It was a, a natural flow of, of the idea. What would you two say to someone who thinks they shouldn't venture into public art because they have little kids, they don't have the adequate ideal studio space? How would you respond to a question, or to a concern like that? Well, I'm, a, I'm always go to my, my my comment is no excuses. I don't make uh I, I got two kids, I got an eight month old, well nine month old now, and a three year old. And I still have to do what I do. I mean they're in the background running around now. So uh I have to do what I have to do. They're they're, they're always uh either stepping on something, pulling down something. I mean they're I, I love to have them as a part of the work as well in the process and making it. I mean, so now you're really the person who actually buys it or acquire, acquires the piece one day. They're, good, they're, they're getting the total uh, embodiment of me when they get that piece because, I mean, usually, I'm usually I'm holding my son or I'm doing something with my daughter or she's putting, adding this brush stroke in there. So it's always something beautiful about that. So no excuses on my end. Now, 
Lauren might have something different about that. She might say, hey, 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 but me. That's don't even, say, don't <laughs> even. <laughs> yeah. It's I don't not know. excuses. I think but, it's circumstances. I get that. And and I and I'm all for that. But but me where I come from, I, I, I couldn't make no excuses. I come from the bottom. I'm gonna keep it honest with you. We didn't have no excuses. You know what I'm saying? We had to make it out. So I just look at it. I, I know where I come from. I come yeah. from the mother. So I'm a, I, nothing, nothing can stop me. Nothing. <laughs> I feel similarly. Um, <laughs> I, I do. I think for me, I mean, our, our lives are very different. Everyone's right. Where we came from is very different. The privilege is very different. Where, like where I came from. Uh, so maneuvering and finding jobs is just, is different. Um, I will say like, I, I know I am a single mom. I do have a child with special needs. It makes situations a little bit more challenging. I think that I'm finding myself as I'm getting older and there is more success. I'm, I'm also though just showing myself more grace. I think that there is a level of fear. I think that like your kids should never be used as an excuse because they're not a burden. And I think that like you can be honest with yourself and your circumstances, but not allow your children to hold you back from doing the thing that you want to do, especially if it's creating. Um, I don't think, I don't want to dismiss like the struggle. There's, it's hard. It's not easy. There are times where like, I've gone into it with customers because of time. There are, and I, I can't tell them like, oh, we're dealing with this thing when it comes to autism. That's, that's mine. And, but it is the reality of the situation because I am a single mom and I, there's, I play many different roles. So I think just being honest with yourself, do not put too much pressure on yourself work though, find ways to include your kids in the thing. I do think Antoine is right. I mean, excuses are, um, it's, a, it's a construct that we've set up in our minds that like we can't do the things, but I think that you can have reasonable expectations and also show yourself grace as you're figuring out how things work and how to have this part of your life also while being a parent. So. Yeah. Yeah. There we have to um, wrap it up, I think. And so I wanna- Really thank our two artists for um, their contributions today, and, and you know, and their sharing their experiences with us. And we would ask you. We will be sending you a link to a survey to, um, uh, uh, to ask you about how you felt about today's um, uh, event. And we definitely want to encourage you to sign up for next week's studio visit, which will be our first um, international visit. We'll be going to Sao Paulo. Uh, virtually to visit with Alex Senna and Toka Oko. So we would love to have you along with us. And thank you all for participating today. And um, if, if you have any other questions you'd like to direct to the artist, please um, do send those to us. Yeah, thanks great. for sharing so much of yourselves, you guys. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us. It was fun. Thank you so thank you. much. Bye. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank There's you. a survey. Oh yeah, the survey link is in the chat if you want to use that or you'll get an email. So thanks so much again. All right, bye you guys. Bye everyone. Bye.